Hi, I'm Advocate Masako and uh, representing Bafana Mahungel. Uh, we were asking, sir, if you could please uh, maybe briefly explain to us how you feel, because we have seen an exchange between you and the magistrate where you are pleading with the court to give you much respect in terms of how these proceedings are run. Um, it's a feeling of frustration and uh, to an extent being hopeless. But, uh, you know, as a black person, we, <laughs> we have seen it all. And uh, we we can endure and persevere, but there comes a time in our lives when the, you know utter disrespect has to be uh, dealt with. You know we're totally unimpressed, and uh, it would seem this Alexander Court has lots of things to be improved on, especially the race issue. We are treated like um, secondary human beings. I'm not that. There's no respect of the Constitution. The magistrates wouldn't um, give you the respect they give to white colleagues. It's a problem. And it seems they're operating on the whim of what they feel on the day. Boshoff as a magistrate, an experienced magistrate, with respect, can do better. You'll appreciate this is a small court. What uh, the Honorable Magistrate Prislo did, <laughs> it's almost the same what Mr. Boshoff is doing. They are just behaving in the same way. We are not going to tolerate this. Uh, because we come here with respect, we have been taught ethics, and I'm representing a client. And if I'm going to be disrespected in the presence of my client, then I'm worthy of absolutely nothing. So um, that was the reason why I had to remind him that I'm not a garden boy, you know, somebody who's washing his cars at his house or taking his kids to the crash. I am a qualified advocate and maybe even more qualified than he is. And uh, as I was trying to talk and raise my points, he was dismissing me. And you can't do that. And so for the very first time, when I appeared for the first time, the same attitude. He said he was ready for me. For what? He, you know, in a very fighting you know, spirit. And that draws one to no other inference but the ra a, a race issue. And you'll remember even Bafana Mahungela when he testified, he testified to the effect that there's some subtle competition in this country about white and black. And it's worrying. It's worrying. We're talking about the new South Africa. Where, what does it do? Because black life is still cheap. You know? We are simply saying the law applicable to whites has to be e equally applicable to blacks. But it's not happening in this court. And it would seem it has been a trend, it would seem it has been a tradition, it seems it has been a culture. Guess what? After you guys left, then he says to me, do you want to see me in my chambers? For what? I guess his conscience is telling him that he, there's something wrong he's doing. But why this act of cowardice of wanting to see me when the media is gone? In other words, the prosecution, in, in almost what it, it does in this case, is to impress the public at expense of a poor boy who is only 21 years of age. It's sad, isn't it? Yes. On any other issue? Yes. Um, we heard that the matter might be uh, transferred to the High Court. Yes. Um, we, we've got... Uh, uh, our records, but the only records are standing are for the 29th. Uh, indeed, this matter is going to the High Court. My papers are ready, uh, and uh, my attorney is also um, waiting as I'm waiting. But we hope and trust by next week we would have um, served our papers and filed, and then wait for a date. Our heads, our grounds of appeal are ready, and yeah, we're ready to shoot because. Uh, injustice has to be met with justice, and fairness has to be met with fairness. And we are of the view that not all courts are like Alexander Court. 
we we the law allows us to take us to take this matter to the high court and uh, soon we guess this matter will be heard in the high court are you able to share which high court this matter will sit this matter will be in the Johannesburg high court because uh, yeah pretoria has juris exclusive jurisdiction but um, it's it's okay we'll take it to Johannesburg high court and uh, we hope that uh, you know, better treatment and application of the law, reasonableness. Judges are not like uh, magistrates who behave like these ones. We have honorable judges in this country. And I'm not saying all magistrates are like this. I know magistrates who are prepared to serve the who are real public servants without any race, color or creed. You understand? They respect the Constitution, especially Section 9 of the Constitution, which says we are all equal before the law. But here, it does not apply. It's so sad. Uh, we saw you uh, consult with your client. Uh, are you able to share with us how he's feeling at this moment? Yeah, look, uh, the young man should be at school. Like any ordinary white, black, colored uh, child. But this system says no, you have to be in there. <laughs> and you, you have heard, matter has been postponed to the 10th of May. In other words, he must be in custody whilst they are postponing. We requested them to postpone this matter finally for the 10th of May, and they said no, there's still a lot to be uh, investigated. One fundamental mistake which you had, they said, they still need the DNA, but the minister said there was no prima facie case of rape. Did you hear that? Yeah, so you can see that by in time, for as long as he sits there, his, it's anticipatory punishment, it suits them well. At least uh, some people of better class and what have you are, are being given that guarantee that with this boy, we will use him as an example that the law is working. <laughs> but it's, it's not the, the proper way to do things, unfortunately, you know, and we're not going to leave those things. That, that could have been my son, that could have been my cousin, that could have been, but we are simply saying, if he has committed any crime, he must serve for it. But if he hasn't committed any crime, why should he? Then you are punishing an innocent person, as it were. We know for a fact in this country that intimate partners are the ones most of the time we're killing. Pistorius, Rode, I mentioned those cases, she brushed them away. And somebody has to be used as a scapegoat. And unfortunately, it's my client, or fortunately for them. Yeah, it's how it works in this country. But look, we won't lose hope. Some of us have fought for where we are, and uh, we hope uh, we. We, we hope we are not in a very dire situation. We know there are pockets of race and they cannot be left unattended. Right? Good. Thank you so, so much, Advocate, for your time. We are also here with the father of the murder accused, Bafana Mahongela. Your thoughts, sir, on the court's behavior, on how the proceedings are going and how your family is holding up? In, on my side, I do not mind how they behave, but the main fact is I want my child back to school. That's all I'm pleading, I'm asking from them. Irrespective of race or whatsoever, apartheid, whatever, whatever they are using, I don't mind about that. The only plea or request that I have, I want my son to be back to school so that he can get also his degree. How is this affecting your family, sir? We heard that the mother was not doing well. Uh, well, on any scenario, if, if something happens to, the, any, to any of the families, irrespective of mine or yours or anyone, it will affect everyone in, at the end of the day. That's how it is. It is what it is.